We all remember Theresa May in her first speech as Prime Minister pledging to fight the burning injustices of inequality. And politicians of all stripes have championed the idea of social mobility, of creating equal opportunities for all, regardless of background. And yet it just hasn't worked. As it stands in the UK, it would take five generations for poorer families to reach the average income. That's because people can't climb up in a society that's unequal. And in Britain, which by some measures is one of the most unequal countries in Europe, we have inequality levels that belong to the 1930s. You can't tackle social mobility when there are such wide gaps between rich and poor, when half of England is owned by 1% of the population, when one in three children lives in poverty, when students from the top nine private schools are 94 times more likely to join the British elite than children educated anywhere else. As a policy objective, social mobility has failed. Switching our focus to social justice and wealth redistribution is far more likely to address those burning injustices across the nation. Well, that's a statistic. One in three children live in poverty. Define poverty. So this is not a new statistic. This has been around for quite a while, and okay. it's something that actually we could look at. Um, but how much is it? What's, what's we could, poverty per week, per month, per We hour? could look at the UN Special Six. Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, Philip Alston, um, because he well, actually... I don't believe the figure, by the he way. Let, actually, let me come at this a different way. He actually you proved to me that figure's not a load of cobblers. He introduced... Well, it's a UN <laughs> report. No, but Do you give, me the, me, give to... me the money. Give me how much. Just the answer for fact is it's 60% of median earnings. Six, That's the what, definition. Do we know what median earnings is? Is that 20-something thousand? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. 20, so 27, 28,000. So, so we're talking about 16, 16 17,000 pounds per annum, right? And that's poverty. Tell that to the pensioners watching this. Nick, I feel like you're not really living in this country if you don't understand the rate of poverty yeah. that it's people are experiencing. I don't, I don't know, because you look up, and down, up and down the country, Nick. We have people who are living in poverty. poverty. Let's have a listen to what Philip Alston said. He is the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights. Let's have a listen to what sure. he said. The results of the austerity experiment are crystal clear. There are 14 million people living in poverty, record levels of hunger and homelessness, falling life expectancy for some groups, ever fewer community services, and greatly reduced policing. UK standards of well-being have descended precipitately in a remarkably short period of time as a result of deliberate policy choices made when many other options are available. So what he has said is that this is a choice, that, that you know, one of the most frustrating things about looking at the level of um, hardship in this country, because we have an economy that isn't working for most people, and one of the most frustrating things about that is that sense of inevitability. It doesn't actually have to be that way. We can reprogram the economy to make it work in a way that is fairer for all people. And the reason and going back to my original subject, the reason that social mobility hasn't worked in the UK is that, mm -hmm. it, that it has failed, is that you cannot have social mobility in a society right. where is, there is such... Well, the Jeremy Corbyn where... Memorial Lecture is now over. <laughs> I'm telling you this. £17,000 <laughs> nice per annum. 17,000 pounds per annum is it not really sounds like you poverty. Engaged with the well, I'll just text on it. it falls upon me, it <laughs> no. seems, again, to produce the uh, response ah. on some of the targets in this debate. So the Department for Work and Pensions... Thank you. Uh, would like to come in here and they said we take tackling poverty extremely seriously uh, which is why we spend 95 billion pounds a year on welfare and maintain a state pension system that supports people into retirement all the evidence shows that full-time work is the best way to boost your income and quality of life which is why our welfare reforms are focused on supporting people into employment and we introduce the national living wage so people earn more in uh, work what, what I'd like to say actually is when I first came across this and I'm really happy you're raising this subject I think that inequality is one of the pressing issues of our day, though I am sceptical of Alston, I think the way these appointments happen is somebody in the UN, because he worked for free, he did it for free, it's not, it's not a paid appointment, he was a professor in New York, someone says, oh, I like his views, why don't you appoint him? And it's right. a bit of a political appointment. I'm sceptical of him, but it's a really important topic, and I think actually, but when I first read it, though, or came across it as a, as a Labour announcement, it did feel to me a bit like a dig at the new Labour years as well. And I just want to bring... Yeah, I just want to bring in old Tony Blair, who, who, who actually is looking rather old in this, but let's have a look at what he says. <laughs> we made the UK more equal, more fair, and more socially mobile. And we never, ever said inequality didn't matter or that tackling it 
was not a priority of the government. Of course, like any government, we had faults, failures, and did things people disagreed with. But don't tell me, or those who worked with me, or those who were part of the Labour Party at the time, that we did nothing for the poorest in our country or the world. Well, the reason I, reason I brought him in, uh, Rachel, is because Mr Corbyn began his announcement with the words, for decades we've mm. been told that inequality doesn't matter. Now, the word decades includes the, the Blair years. Yeah. And so Mr Blair responded, and that was a response specifically for the announcement, and he said, don't tell us we didn't care about inequality. I'm not meaning me, mm. as in him. And, uh, and, and he felt quite insulted by that. And I kind of sympathise with his perspective, because I think it's a really important topic, but I seem to remember the new Labour years, and they did care about inequality. So there's a, there's a couple of... So one of the things about that is that, you know, it's decades for a reason. Now, Tony Blair and new Labour, they did, ca they did care about raising people out of poverty. Um, they introduced measures to try and tackle that. Short sure mm. Start is a very good example, although the government has now shut those down. Literacy. Um, yep. Literacy, you know, NHS funding, wage. pensioners. Yep. They did, they did. Yep. but they bought into an eco economic system, which we have had for 30 years, hence the decades. They bought into that economic system. They thought, as long as we just, you know, put in some short start programs, it will be fine, wealth will trickle down. But the reality was that the, the economic system in itself is creating that inequality. Uh, Danny Dawling, the social geographer, geographer, he calls Tony Blair the king of inequality. Because actually, during that period of new oh, Labour, during okay. that period of new yeah. Labour okay. rule, okay. wait okay. a minute, let, by let, every let's measure, just, let's just stop. income, let's health just, can and we just, inequality, can we just stop? all think, went can we, Tony Blair, king of inequality, would it be okay, all went up under new Labour. That's the problem. Would it be okay if we just put a, Would it be okay if we just put a pause on the name calling? Mm -hmm. um, the most important and significant boost to social mobility in this society came through the 1970s, 1980s and 1990s. And it came for... Don't shake your head, it's true. It came for a very specific reason, which was that there was a massive expansion in the need for white-collar jobs. That is why people like me and probably other people around this table got to university and got professional jobs. My family are people who worked in uniforms, you know, the reason I was able to get in was because there was an expansion and a change in the economy. It had very little to do with things you're talking about. The question we've got to deal with now is how do we make sure that we keep that going? What you seem to be proposing is that, you know, we're in a building, we're all on the ground floor. What you want to do is to take away the stairs so nobody can climb to the second floor, but simply just bring down the second floor to the same level and bring up the basement we're and say... We're not all on the ground floor. That's precisely the point. But, but, we're not all so, on the ground okay, floor well, look, because privilege but, reproduces but, but, but Rachel, privilege. Rachel, why don't we you be honest? Invisible, why don't you have... be honest? If what you want to do is to say, let's soak the bloody rich, let's take their land away, let's tax them to the hilt, I am actually rather with you on that. What I can't stand, <laughs> what, I can't, what I can't stand is this sort of, this kind of mimsy, oh, we're, we're going to do something about social justice. If what you want to do is attack privilege, say that's what you want to do. Let's okay, hear from so the rich, let's hear from the rich, <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> Where are they? Where's the rich? Um, um, the building. Are you saying, because you're talking about changing um, entire economic, so are you anti-capitalist? Is that what we're talking about? That's a good saying, question, because I was wondering that. When yeah, you, when you are you an anti-capitalist? Yeah. So that's, that's precisely <clears throat> the point. It's it's about... I actually think when we talk about social mobility, it's interesting because we always... Wait. Yes or no would be... I'm going to answer that question, I promise, because when we talk about social mobility, we always talk about it in terms of people from poorer backgrounds going upwards. We never talk about privileged people having to let go of a bit of their privilege so they're not, not reproducing it. For some people to come up, some people have to come down. I, I found... Um, I've followed this debate with interest in terms of moving away from the word social mobility to the word social justice. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think, if I... Correct me if I'm wrong, so now we want to replace a social mobility commission with a social justice commission. Is that right? Yeah. Which to me is going full circle because the social um, the social mobility commission used to be called the child poverty commission, mm -hmm. which then went on to social mobility and is now going social justice. And it is a fact that you can't have social justice without social mobility. Social, you've got to tackle social mobility, social economics, um, and social sorry, social exclusion and poverty. And I just feel a little <laughs> bit like what's going on? I don't. I don't know. Is understand. we are using these trendy words to pitch us against them and them against you and they are bad and you are good and we're going to be the saviours that's going to fix this. And I just find it a little bit... But also, can I just... Your question, I think, was a really pertinent one because what I don't understand is what, what about what you just 
said in response to Michelle's question, did Tony Blair not do? Public spending went up when he became, 97, uh, when he came in, it went up from 35%, and then over the course of that next decade, so 45%. What is it he did not do that you're not happy with? He, this is the he terrible maintained th an economic system that, exagger but, but that exaggerated... That system, no, I don't, economy. no, I don't agree with a free market just, neoliberal just one system. Sentence. It exaggerated inequalities. You'd have to listen yeah. to me. It's the FT. Yeah. The FT reported that yeah. during New Labour's rule... So what system would was, you want? There was inequality increased. What this system is, would that's you want? This is a terrible thing about the Corbynistas. You want to bury Tony Blair, don't. but you, but, but you, but you cannot him. bring yourselves to have the courage simply to say, we're Marxists, we want everything uh, changed, let's kill it. Yeah. Uh, Just say it. Yeah. You might, you might get an audience. I mean, don't pretend yeah. you're saying something that you're not. I don't have a problem with um, <laughs> Marxist economic systems. Aha! Neither yeah. do I have any problem with crediting Tony Blair for introducing things like Shawstar. Right. It's not either or.